All right. I feel like post bland, I should like scrap my talk and just do an interpretive dance or something <laughs> instead. <laughs> it's really a rough transition, but I'll do my best. All right, so I just want to ask how many people in the audience feel that something amazing is happening right now? Totally, totally. I do as well, and if you ask anyone who knows me, I've had a bit of an attitude adjustment over the past couple of months, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've been working on letting go of and what I'm working on embracing. So like any ontological process, right, there are many parallel layers. And I think many of you probably are experiencing a personal process that seems to mirror something that's also going on on the level of global consciousness, right? So I spent the better part of my adult life really living in what could be described as my masculine energy, right? My first email address was Kelbro at Hotmail, and I thought that was like a clever combination of my first and last name, but really I think it was more a nod to my inner bro, because I've been always a very righteous person, very sort of management-oriented, a doer, a fixer, and somebody very interested in mastery. So these were some of the things that I used to believe, uh, largely nurtured by my conventional training, right? that science is truth at any given time, that the one who knows the most science is, of course, right, that there is a right and a wrong, a good and a bad, that there's a rational explanation, of course, for everything that deviates from what science would predict, that there is an urgency always, and that misfortune really comes from laziness and lack of preparation. So this was my story. And there are many forefathers to this story, right? To this idea that we are here put on this earth, as Alan Watts would say, flesh robots on a dead rock floating in the middle of nowhere, right? That we are put on this earth to lord over and to exact our power and force over the natural world, right? And so an unintended consequence of this perspective is that we end up feeling fundamentally separated from nature. And of course, the extension of that is separated from each other, our communities, and even ourselves, our, our own souls, spirits, and minds. So the posture of this story is one that encourages a warring stance, right? So what is medicine today? It's antibiotics. It's anti-hypertensives. It's antidepressants, right? And so we continue to position ourselves against what we have labeled as bad wrong or in need of domination or eradication. And the problem is that we continue to use more and more failed science and technology to make up for the failed science and technology. So the type of medicine that this culture supports is of course one where the human body is a machine, right? It's made up of a, you know, bags of different parts and largely predetermined genes. We put calories in and of course the environment is largely irrelevant because we're impervious to it, right? And the, you know, the nature of this experience of ourselves really ends up influencing us from a, a top-down layer. And it ends up being a, a, almost like a, a predetermined medical system applied to the impersonal patient. The beauty is, of course, as we've discussed, that science is a journey. It's a process, and it's certainly never a destination, lest it be a dangerous force. We've made many, many mistakes. I think we all can probably agree, right? We once thought, even when I was a medical student not too long ago, that the brain was a privileged space, you know, that there was no immunity uh, occurring there. We thought the womb was sterile. We thought that DCIS was a cancer. We thought, of course, that, that genes equaled disease. In 1949, there was a Nobel Prize awarded for the therapeutic lobotomy. Not so bad. And, of course, there are multiple oopses, right, in the realm of the pharmaceutical industry, of course. But none, as James has mentioned, has had the paradigm-shifting, patriarchally decimating effect that our awareness of the microbiome has. Right? No longer can we even define ourselves the way we used to. No longer can we even perceive this skin to be a barrier between myself and the natural world. Right? Our you know, maternal inheritance of ancient uh, bacteria in the form of mitochondria, of course, recentering natural birth in its righteous place, in the, the, the very vitality of our species. And 
in many ways, what this has done is forced medicine to surrender back to nature. So this is the new story, and I think this is what we're starting to feel into. I love the term the holobiont, right, because it necessitates a holistic view of our interconnectedness with the natural world. It's about cooperativity, co-creation. It's about shared and reciprocal interests, right, that in fact, what is good for the planet, what is good for you, is in fact also good for me. And of course, it decimates all of these false boundaries. They're just blown away by it. And very importantly, it's a non-hierarchical system. So just as we look to modern hunter-gatherers, for example, and we sample their stool and try to examine their microbiome to figure out you know, where we should be going with this information, we might also start to look to them, to the nature of their very day-to-day -day existence, to what they tap into that helps them experience something that we are in many ways seemingly missing out on. So this notion is referred to as the continuum concept, right? And it's this idea that we have evolved over millions of years to expect on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level to expect a certain relationship with Mother Nature and with our own mothers, in fact. And that any departure from that relationship will start to pull on us, right? And we'll start to feel that pull because something will feel wrong. Something will feel like it's missing, and something will feel off. And I think many of us can describe our experience as being characterized by that sensation. So this is the new medicine, right? It invokes a trust in the body, a connection to the environment, food as, of course, information, and a sense of community. And in this type of medicine, symptoms are a message they are an invitation to begin to examine how far from that continuum have you strayed. And in this type of medicine, we are looking to inspire an experiential knowing, right? So what I do in my practice with patients is invite them into a healing experience so that they can know intuitively what their bodies are capable of so that they won't need me anymore. So as Nick Gonzalez once wrote me, let the current system exist in a parallel universe and start from scratch with a completely new system that's based on nutrition, psychology, and spirituality. Prescient man. And the most important message here is the one that I struggled with the most, which is that this isn't about warring, right? If it's not going to be about warring, it shouldn't be about warring. So that means it's also not about fighting the current system. It's not about women as being dominant over men either. It's about awakening a feminine principle in every person and also in the systems that we engage. So as Candace Pert said, the science I have come to know is unifying spontaneous intuitive caring, a process more akin to surrender than to domination, right? And in many ways, this is what I'm beginning to understand, is that as much as I love data and science, Science is really intended to inspire a state of awe and wonder. That's its only purpose. So Thoreau said that it takes two to speak the truth, right? It takes one person to speak and one person to listen. And it's my passionate belief that more and more people than maybe ever before in human history are ready to listen. And so I want you to feel into these concepts, sit with them, and see if you're ready to choose this different story. Thank you.